The General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, that data thing we need to sort out. Whatever you call it, GDPR is here. And if you think it's just an IT matter, it's time to think again. GDPR affects every aspect of your business. Yes, even if your business is small, even if your business is, well, just you. But don't worry, in this video, we're going to explain exactly what you need to know, exactly what you need to do, and exactly why you need to do it. GDPR in a nutshell. Today, we live in a truly online world, and it's our right to enjoy a certain level of privacy when we use the internet. Created by the European Parliament, the Council of the European Union, and the European Commission, GDPR aims to strengthen and unify data protection for all residents of the EU. Basically, it's a set of common standards that gives us all more control over our personal data. Throughout this video, we'll be talking a lot about that. Personal data. Personal data is any information that can be used directly or indirectly to identify us. This could be a name, a photo or an email address. It could be bank details and medical information, or it could be a computer's IP address, cookies or posts on social networking sites like Facebook and Instagram. As a business owner, it's important to get in line with GDPR. Firstly, to give your customers confidence that their data is in safe hands. And secondly, because failure to comply could leave you with legal action and a nasty fine. We're talking 4% of your global annual turnover or 20 million euros, whichever is greater. Yikes, here's how you'll need to tighten up. Let's start with your activities. Marketing is one of the biggest areas that's been impacted by GDPR. That's because you're no longer allowed to contact potential or even existing customers using their personal data, like their personal email addresses, without their express permission. Let's say you're sending out a marketing email to your mailing list. Everyone on your database must have given clear consent that they want to receive this content in a freely given, specific, informed and unambiguous way, which is reinforced by clear affirmative action. You can't automatically subscribe someone to your list or assume they want to receive emails from you simply because they've dealt with you before. The best way to give their consent is through opt-in, or more specifically, by creating an opt-in form. This form asks in a clear, unambiguous way whether customers are happy for you to store and use their personal data. You'll need to explain exactly what you're going to use their data for, for example, sending marketing emails, and options on the form cannot be pre-ticked. That means customers have to click on the opt-in box themselves. No need to panic, plenty of them will. You might have also heard of double opt-in. Double opt-in isn't compulsory, but it's definitely good practice. If someone signs up for your mailing list, you could then send them a confirmation email, checking they definitely want to subscribe. Until they've clicked on the confirmation button, they won't be added to your database. Next up, data storage. Once you're only sending marketing communications to the people who really want to receive it, it's important to look at how you're storing those people's personal data. After all, you don't want any information to get lost, stolen, or seen by people who were never supposed to see it. Like hackers, the integrity and confidentiality element of GDPR says that you must think about your risks to see where breaches might happen, write policies or plans on how you securely store your data, use pseudonymization and encryption where appropriate. This means replacing data that can be used to identify people with data that contains artificial information or changing this data into a code that only you understand. Make sure your systems and services are secure enough to provide confidentiality while allowing you to access the information you need and quickly should anything go wrong. Test how effective your measures are and improve them if needed. What's more, you're no longer allowed to store personal details across multiple devices or programs, and you'll need to make sure that only authorised personnel can see this information. So, your customers have opted in and their data is stored safely. Fantastic. But what if they change their mind about hearing from you? Or if the personal data you hold on them becomes outdated or inaccurate? 
or if you've unintentionally processed this data unlawfully, or if they want a child's details removed from your systems. Under GDPR, everyone you deal with has the right to be forgotten. Essentially, it's your responsibility to make sure your customers and prospects can easily access their data and remove it from your systems if that's what they want. This can be as simple as adding an unsubscribe link at the bottom of your emails or adding a link to a user's profile where they can manage their preferences. Now, there's just one thing left to talk about and hopefully you'll never need to put this information into practice. But as the UK's small businesses are targeted with 65,000 attempted cyber attacks every single day, it's important to know what to do if you suffer a data breach. GDPR says you must report serious data breaches to the relevant authority within 72 hours of finding out about it. If the breach puts prospects and customers' personal data at risk, you'll need to let them know too, and fast. Having robust breach detection, investigation and internal reporting procedures can make it easier to know who to report these things to. Then, get to work on carrying out your response plan. So, that's it. Everything you need to know about GDPR. But if you still need a bit more help, you can visit our website for your copy of our GDPR checklist. Now don't just sit there, start putting some of these tips into practice and make sure your business, no matter how small, is compliant.